Hey everyone, welcome back to the Photo Booth Supply Co. YouTube channel. My name is Cameron with the Photo Booth Supply Co. Success Team, and today we're going to be talking all about how you can create those custom event interfaces. So tap to start screens, background screens, disclaimers, and we're going to be going over all of it in Canva, which is a completely free tool to use. Uh, and I think uh, you guys are going to be surprised at how easy it actually is once we get doing it. So as always, I would love to see who is in the in the chat. So feel free to throw your name in there, where you're from. And then as always, if you guys have any questions as I'm going through anything, uh, definitely throw them in the chat. I'll be checking in from time to time and answering all of your questions as we go along. So let me share my screen with you guys here and like I said we're gonna be going over event interfaces in salsa now if you don't use salsa maybe you're using our queso booth for example the process is actually pretty similar there's a couple things that you might do slightly differently such as like the actual dimensions or the file format that you'll use but in general the entire process is pretty much the same and again I think you guys are gonna be shocked at really how easy this can be using something like Canva um, now, of course, you don't have to use Canva. You can use really any photo editing program out there, whether it's Photoshop or you know, whatever you decide to use. Uh, but Canva is probably the easiest one. And like I said, there are a ton of really great free templates and um, design assets that you can use on Canva. So we're going to be going over that one. So we got somebody from California Pacific Northwest. Awesome, nice. Thank you guys for joining me. And, and again, if you're just hopping in, no worries. Uh, like I was saying, feel free to throw your questions in the comments, in the, to the chat. Uh, and if you jump in a little bit later or you, know, you have to go midway through it, don't worry. As always, the live stream is recorded. It will be available here on our YouTube channel. Uh, and we do these weekly. So definitely feel free to, uh, to subscribe to the channel. This is my little, my little YouTube-y uh, section. Make sure you subscribe and uh, turn on the little bell icon. That way you're notified every time we're live. So like I was saying, we're gonna be going over the event interfaces inside of Salsa. And to get to those interfaces, you just open up any event. Uh, in this case, I actually created a new event just for the purpose of this live stream. But if you already have an existing event, you can use that. You'll just go into the configure event section. And then when you're in this section, it'll open up on the event info tab first. You just click on the event interface. And this is really what we're gonna be covering today. So again, the tap to start screen, the background screen, and the disclaimer. Now for the tap to start screen and the background screen, they should really be pretty similar. Of course, you can create two different designs for them if you prefer, but ideally you want the look of your event to be pretty consistent. Now, the other thing that's important to remember is, especially after we go through everything and you guys see really how easy and how quickly you can do this, uh, you have to make sure you're charging for this. This is definitely a premium service. Uh, it's a premium add-on. It's something that I actually don't include uh, in my middle or even in my base package. I won't talk too much about pricing because, of course, pricing is going to depend on all of you and your market, your demographic. Um, you know your market a lot better than I do. So... Just to kind of give you guys an idea, though, one thing that I do is whenever I'm working with like a basic, you know, a client who booked my most basic package, uh, that's what I'm just going to use typically anyway, uh, just this black and white tap to start screen because it's black and white, right? It goes with anything, pretty much any event, any aesthetic, any theme uh, is going to look great with this black and white uh, screen. And then when it's a middle event or like a mid-tier event, that's when I'm going to use one of these built-in designs. Now, if you haven't been in Salsa in a while, definitely go check it out. There are a ton of pre-made, really beautiful designs here. Uh, things like, you know, the holiday ones that we have. We also have, you know, this that you could use for like a baby shower, uh, graduation, especially with a lot of uh, graduations right around the corner. Uh, and then we also have things like Halloween. And these are really great options. These add a custom element to the event. But these are really things that I keep in my mid-tier package. And the reason for that is because they're getting something that's more custom, but it's not completely custom to them. It doesn't have their name. It doesn't have the name of their event uh, or the date of their event or anything like that. And that's really what we're going to be going over is creating those very, very customized, high-end, um, even branded if you're working with a corporate client, that type of look. Uh, we got somebody visiting from Dallas. Awesome. Great. Like I said, too, you know, throw any questions you guys have in the chat. Um, I would love to hear kind of how you guys also use these tap to start screens. If there's anything that maybe you do a little bit more creatively uh, that I haven't mentioned, I would love to hear that. I know a lot of people do some really cool and creative things with these. 
So to get started, we obviously need to make our design. And so the first place that you really want to start out is the support site. Now, our support site, it's super easy to access. You can either go to it directly. It's just support.photoboothsupplyco.com or you can click on the support icon on the left-hand side of the Salsa web app and that'll take you directly there as well. Now, once you're on the support site, you're gonna click on the Salsa app icon and if you've never been to the support site, definitely check it out. We have a ton of amazing articles that are all about Salsa and all the things that Salsa can do. Definitely goes into more detail. Uh, so even if it's not the event interfaces you're curious about, you know, we really do cover almost every other feature here. So definitely a great place to check out if you haven't. But since we're going to be focusing on the event interface, really what we want to do is we want to find out what dimensions should we use when we're creating this event interface. And, and after we have the dimensions, well, what file format should we save it as? So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Salsa file requirements here. This is going to pull up basically a little cheat sheet of all of the dimensions and file formats for anything inside of Salsa that you can customize. So you're not just going to find the dimensions and the file format for the event interfaces here. You're also going to find the dimensions for photo templates, for overlays, all the things that pertain to virtual booth and so on and so forth. So this is a really good article that Honestly speaking, if you're going to bookmark one of our articles, this should be it. Uh, and if you don't personally design your stuff and maybe you're just starting to get into it, but you have a designer, make sure you send this to them as well. This is how you can avoid a lot of issues that might pop up uh, when you maybe don't use the right size or the right dimension or file format or whatever it might be. So now that we're in here, we're going to look and we are on the event interface section. Uh, we see tap to start and background screen. That's what we're going to start out with. Now the tab to start in background screen, these can be either an MP4 file. So if you wanted to do like a video file, I won't be going over how to do videos today, um, but it's basically the same process. It's just a video, uh, JPEGs and then PNGs. So we're going to either save it as a JPEG or as a PNG, but that'll be at the very end. Uh, but really most importantly, we see that it should be 2048 by 2732. And any of these dimensions you see on this page are always referring to pixels. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually dive in the Canva. We're going to click create a new design up here in the upper right hand corner. We're going to create a custom size design and you can see it's actually in my recents, but let's just pretend it wasn't. I'm just going to type in here 2048 by 2732. And again, all of these sizes and all these dimensions are going to be in pixels. So you want to make sure that it says pixels or PX and this goes, you know, whether it is Canva or Photoshop or really any other program. So we're going to click on create new event and it's going to take us to our basically our, our blank canvas to start creating. Now, if you guys are in the Facebook groups, you probably saw that uh, Amanda is putting an end to Dominique and Brighton. So this is going to be their season finale of Dominique and Brighton. And this is going to be the last time out of all of the times that they've gotten married. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a wedding themed tap to start screen and background screen today. Now, how you make something, it's really the same. It's just maybe how you theme it or, or how you design it, but the, the overall idea is, is pretty much the same. So what we're gonna do now is, since this is gonna be a wedding design, I'm gonna actually take advantage of some of Canva's built-in templates, and I am going to just search for wedding. It's actually even already there, but uh, I'm just gonna search for wedding, and it's gonna pull up a bunch of different designs for us. Now, Canva is one of those tools that you can use for not just your tap to start screens, but for your Instagram stories, for invitations, for advertisement, and, and really showing off your photo booth. You can do so much with Canva. And so based on this size, Canva is assuming really that we're either talking about like an invitation, you know, some sort of announcement, um, maybe even a, like a, a menu, like a food menu. So I'm just gonna scroll through and just kind of see what some of our options are here. Um, out of all of these options, I like this one. We're going to go with this one right here. It says Terrence and Catherine, uh, and we're going to use this design as kind of our starting point. Now, like I was saying, we can see that this was initially made probably for like an announcement, uh, an RSVP is really what it looks like. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to use this, but we're just going to change it up a little bit and make it relevant for what we're doing. 
So what I'm going to do here is I am going to, instead of having their name front and center, I'm going to change this to say tap to start because I want my guests at the event to know exactly what they need to do in order to start taking the captures uh, when they're at the photo booth. Up on the top where it says we're tying the knot, well, of course they are. They're already at our wedding. <laughs> They're at Dominique and Brighton's wedding. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to change this. And I think right here is where I'm going to put the name of our couple. So uh, for this example, and like I said, for the season finale of Dominique and Brighton's relationship, I'm going to put Dominique and Brighton. Now down here, we obviously have kind of an RSVP, we have the date, and then we have an address here. I'm actually just going to get rid of that RSVP. We don't need that anymore. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually, I want to stick with that pink, uh, that pink um, font color there. So I'm just going to delete this address. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the date. Of course, we don't need the time because, again, we're already at the event. The guests are already here, so they already know what time it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove the time from the tap to start screen. Now I'm just going to leave the date. So that's kind of it. Now, what I could do is I could, of course, rearrange this. I could center it a little bit. Obviously, there's not as much text as there was before. Uh, so I want to make sure that I kind of center things a little bit and, and get it looking looking nice. Uh, we have the name of our couple up here. We have tap to start. And then again, we have the date. And this is really just a perfect example of how easy to, it is to make a tap to start screen in Canva. Now, of course, you could get really creative with it, right? And so one thing that I could do is I could also look through these other assets, like I could go to elements here, and I could find different shapes or stickers or designs that I want to use. And I could bring these into the tap to start screen and really utilize these as kind of an extra way to spice it up. But I'm pretty happy with how this looks. You know, I could, you know, again, like I was saying, you know, you could always add some more flowers or leaves or really whatever you wanted here. But in this case, I'm really happy with how this looks. And uh, this just kind of gives you an idea of how easy it is to make stuff with Canva. Now, once I have this design made, I'm going to click on download because I want to download this design and I want to bring it over to Salsa. And for the file type, it's suggesting that I do a PNG, which is totally fine because that's exactly what I need for, um, for it to work in Salsa without any issues. So I'm going to leave that as it is. I don't want a transparent background because this isn't an overlay. This is just a, an event interface. Uh, and so I'm going to actually just click on download here. We're going to save the design. It's going to save it to my computer after it kind of exports everything. Perfect. So I'm going to save that file and we're ready to go. Now, what I want to do now is I want to make a background and I want to make a background design that's going to match this tap to start screen. So for the background, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to take this text and I'm just going to delete everything. Um, obviously, with a background, you don't really want to have text because there's going to be stuff on top of it. Right? You're going to have the different capture modes. You're going to have the different, uh, the different options and filters and things. And so you don't really want anything on top of it. I'm going to save it just as this is uh, for the background. So again, super easy to make the tap to start screen and then turn it into a background. Now, let's just say I was working with a client who also wanted to have a disclaimer on there, or maybe the disclaimer is for me, right? It's just going to be kind of an extra layer of protection for myself. Well, I could even make this disclaimer match the tap to start and background screen again to just keep everything very consistent uh, along the way. So I'm actually going to undo what I was just doing and you can undo things just with control and Z or uh, command Z. If you're on a Mac, you can also use these little buttons up here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it up a little bit again. So I am going to move this up and get rid of that. The name of my newlyweds. I'm going to change this to disclaimer. And then down here for the date, I'm actually just going to change the color of the font to gray. So that's a little bit easier to read. Uh, and actually, I could even make this a little bit darker if I wanted to. So it was even easier to read. And then this is where I would want to add my disclaimer. So now for my disclaimer, I'm not going to have it centered. I'm just going to put something like um, this is my disclaimer. I can use your photos for marketing and advertising purposes. If you agree to these terms and conditions, press I agree to continue taking 
your photo. Now, obviously that's just kind of an example. You would probably want to make it sound a little bit nicer than that. Uh, maybe sound a little bit more professional and, you know, getting that disclaimer reviewed by a professional is never a bad idea, but just for the purposes of the live stream, I'm just going to keep it real simple, real short and sweet like that. Now what we can do is we can actually go ahead and add like a button an I agree button. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just search button. We'll see if something pops up and it does. I'm going to bring that button in. Actually, I don't like that. That's a gradient there. Just use this plain colored one and I can change the color. And the cool thing with Canva is it actually shows you what colors are already being used in the design. So in this case, I'm gonna just use that same pink color because I wanna keep things very consistent. I'm gonna resize and make that button just a hair smaller. And then what I can do is I can actually add some text on top of that. So I'm going to put, I agree. And again, I can change, and it's gonna show me the different text options that are already being used. So this Aleo uh, font, that was already being used in the disclaimer, so I'm gonna stick with that. Color-wise, I'm gonna use a white color so that it shows up really well on that button. I'm just gonna resize that a little bit, and I'm gonna move that up to here. So super, super simple. I've created these three designs. I made the tap to start screen, I made the background screen, and I made a disclaimer. They all match, and it took me how long has the live stream been going? A couple minutes, uh, like 10 minutes or so. And these are the little things that you can do for your next event that can really not only take what you offer to your client to another level, but it can also be something that you can upsell and something that you can brand. So if you were doing this for you know a corporate client, like I was saying, you could potentially charge quite a bit more for this to really make this match and be branded for their company. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this as well. I want to make sure that I can pull that into salsa. And again, for the disclaimer, uh, it's the exact same sizing. And I was able to find that out by going to the, um, the cheat sheet over here on the, on the support site. So we have the disclaimer, uh, JPEG, PNG, same as up here, and then 2048 by 2732. The only difference was that it's a, it can't be saved as an MP4. A disclaimer does have to be a photo. So now that I have all of those created, I'm gonna go back in the Salsa, I'm going to go into my event interface and I'm going to just start uploading these and start adding these to my event. So I'm gonna click on upload file here. Uh, it was the first one I made, so I'm gonna upload that one first. Let that upload and do its thing. We can see that it's uploading with that little spinning circle. Start that up, tap the start screen. Then for the background screen, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're just gonna upload that file that I just made let that upload, we'll choose that. And then for the disclaimer, we'll do the exact same thing again. We'll upload that disclaimer that I just made. So very easy to do all of this. It, Like I said, it really only takes a couple of minutes, but the extra value that you're providing here to your client, especially again, if it is a corporate client, is huge. And this is stuff that can definitely be upsold for quite a bit more money. Um, I'm going to actually go through and just make another one so that if there was something that you guys missed as I was going through the first one, you can kind of see it again. Uh, but again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. This will be a shorter live stream today. Uh, I really just wanted to kind of go through this stuff with you guys and answer any questions that you might have uh, kind of as we go along. But while you guys ask any questions that you might have, uh, I'm going to go through and like I said, just make another one. This time what we'll do is we'll maybe theme it a little bit differently. So we'll just find a different design. I'm gonna search wedding again, just to stick with that wedding theme. Um, but let's choose something a little bit different. Um, let's do, hmm. You know, we actually, we can do something like this. We'll do a photo and we'll just pretend that this is a photo of our couple. Again, that's something that you could do. It's an additional upsell for you. And it's nice when you're able to add a photo of your client to the tap to start screen, that could be considered a high end upsell because that is really going all the way uh, and, and making this all about your couple. So I'm gonna do really the same sort of thing here. I'm gonna change the name to tap to start. I'm gonna make this top part, same sort of thing, Dominique and Brighton. But again, you know, this, you can rearrange this stuff however you want. Maybe you want to remove some of these kind of like goldish elements. You could totally do that. 
Uh, I'm gonna remove that part right there. And then what I'm gonna do for this bottom part is I'm gonna put just June 14th, 2021, for example. And that's it. And you know, if this wasn't, you know, if I wanted to replace the photo uh, with a photo of uh, of the actual my actual client, I could easily do that. You can add photos into Canva super easily. Um, there's also a bunch of other things that you could do. Like there's different filters, so we could throw those filters on if we want to theme it a little bit differently. In this case, you know, it's black and white. It looks great. Uh, so we're just gonna stick with everything how it is. So again, same sort of thing. I'm just gonna download this. Uh, the file type is perfect, so I'm going to click on download here. And then for the background now, when you're using a photo, it is a little bit different because with a background, you typically don't want to have a picture of a person or something that's really busy because it is going to go behind uh, some of the other options inside of Salsa. And so you really don't want to have the, that stuff blocked or, um, you know, most newlyweds don't really want a big photo button on their face, for example, right? Uh, so what we could do in that case is we could take this, we could look at the effects, for example, Maybe there's something that would blur it a little bit. We can take a look. Let's see. We could do something like, I wonder if there's a blur, not a blur. We could do, hmm. Maybe it's under, ah, right here, blur. So what we could do is we could just blur this out so we could stick with that black and white theme uh, with the, the extra elements over here. But what we could do now is we'll just remove all the text. We still have that photo, so it's still consistent. It still looks the same as we go through. But instead of uh, having the actual photo of our of our clients, it's just going to be you know a blank black and white background with these little gold accent marks. So we're going to save that. And then for the disclaimer, I would probably want to do much of the same thing. Obviously, with a disclaimer, you don't usually want to have a picture of your client there. Uh, so I'm just going to actually leave it as it is with kind of this blurred photo of them in the background, but I'm going to bring back that text now and I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. So I'm going to get rid of the name of my couple. I'm going to put disclaimer once again, and then down here I can do the same thing. This is my disclaimer. Uh, if you take a photo on this booth, I can use it for marketing, advertising and other purposes to use this booth, please tap on I agree below. Just something really simple again, um, you know, and obviously, you know, you'd probably want to change that up a little bit, but just for the purpose of the live stream, we'll keep it pretty simple. We'll put that in the middle again, and then we're going to do the same thing where we go back to the elements tab. We're going to search for the button and it's actually already here because we recently used it. I'm going to lower that in. I'm going to, again, change the color here. So I could use one of these colors from the buttons. Canva is really cool in that it brings those colors in for you. So it's pretty, uh, pretty easy to match stuff, which is always nice. So I'm going to go with that one. That one looks nice. And then what I'll do is I'll do the I agree part again. Uh, we'll just add I agree. And then I will change the, the font to match we could either do the cursive font or we could do the same font as um, the text. I'll go with the cursive one just to make it a little bit fancier. We'll make that a little bit bigger, add that to the middle. And again, super easy to do. And now we've created that custom disclaimer. So super easy. Um, we're just going to save it as a PNG and then I'm going to bring it back in the salsa and I'll just kind of go through again how to upload everything. So again, doing this stuff is super easy to do once you play around with it. And everything I've done in Canva today, I believe is included in Canva for free. Uh, now Canva does have a subscription fee for certain pro features uh, like the uh, transparent background removal. So next week on our live stream, we'll actually be going over how to make overlays and how to make photo templates on Canva. So if that's something that interests you, definitely be sure to uh, subscribe to the channel because we will be doing that next week. Those features do kind of require the, the pro subscription. There are workarounds for it. Um, you know, obviously you could always use Photoshop or something differently, but, um, you know, that is something you need the subscription for, but pretty much everything we've done today, unless one of these templates I've used is considered to be like a pro template, you should be able to do everything for free, uh, which is really, really great, especially with, uh, with Canva. All right. Upload that disclaimer. And once that uploads, that's 
pretty much it. So like I said, guys, this is a super easy way to, to add that tap the start screen, the background screen, the disclaimer screen. It's all very easy, quick, and something that you can charge quite a bit for. So looking at the chat, I don't see that there are too many questions about anything. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of leave this live stream here. Like I said, it's gonna be a shorter one today, but really just so you guys have this video that you can reference anytime you're making designs. Uh, as always though, if you have questions after the fact, you're always more than welcome to throw them into the comments or alternatively just reach out to us at Photo Booth Supply Co. Um, you can email support at photoboothsupplyco.com. That's a super easy way to get in touch with us and we're always more than happy to help out. So. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and for checking out how to make these event interfaces in Canva. I hope that it's gonna be really useful and I would love to see all the designs that you guys make. So feel free to post those in the Facebook after you watch this and play around with it. Uh, throw them into the comments of this video. Again, I would love to see those. So we will see you next week for our next live stream. Again, it'll be going over how to make overlays and photo templates in Canva. So you definitely don't wanna miss that one. Um, but until then, Thank you again for, for hanging out and I will see you in the next live stream.